Welcome to Heal Your Self Connection, where it's all about self-discovery. How well do you know yourself? A question that I didn't know the answer to. So, I started with self-discovery and came to the conclusion there are so many different ways for it. Luckily, there are also many different people for it, so each one can connect to the way that feels right for them. So I want to learn more about this and share this with you. Are you ready for asking the question, who am I? I am. So let's do this! Welcome to episode one of Heal Your Self Connection. <sighs> I'm so excited and I'm also so nervous. And I love that. <laughs> so today we have Dr. Marian Bevington as a guest speaker. A woman that has so much wisdom, life experiences and so many different tools of self-discovery. She made a career switch from programming computers to deprogramming people. Today, she's going to talk about her journey of how she healed herself of an incurable condition and how she took this journey into the unknown and searched for everything that could help her. It made her the woman she is today, free, fulfilled and fabulous. Now she teaches what she has discovered on her path of self-discovery and self-healing. She is very passionate about her Find Your Why Foundation and helping people with all the tools she has learned in the past. So beautiful. I love it. It's a real example for me. So, so welcome Dr. Marion Bevington. Um, it's, a, it's a real honor to have you here and yeah, I, I'm very curious about uh, your teaching and what you will bring today. So. Thank you for just showing up. <laughs> and it's a great um, coincidence. Or it's, no, it's not a coincidence. It's a great synchronicity that we got to do this conversation today because yes. it was such um, a, an inspiring message. I saw that you'd left, that you're uh, sharing information as much as you can, the information that you love with the world. So thank you for putting the invitation out there so I could respond to your invitation. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I just, yeah, showed up and did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you were uh, just like, up, click, and it's what, oh, okay. It was so easy. So thank you. Thank you for uh, showing up. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm what we going to talk about today um, yeah can you give a, a little introduction <laughs> introduction of the hi so it's lovely the subject of your talk that you told me the subject of this podcast is who am I so I'll start with who I am uh -huh. so I'm Marion Bevington I'm Dr Marion Bevington I was recently awarded an honorary doctorate I am a um how I introduce myself is that I used to program computers and now I help to deprogram people. And what that means is that um, after over 20 years in corporate IT, in technology, programming and doing all sorts of things with computers, I went on a journey to help to heal myself. And in that journey, I've become a yoga teacher. I was doing yoga for years when I was working in IT and um, now I understand why. At the time I just did it because I thought it was great mm -hmm. but now I understand why I thought it was great. And um, it, as I started to teach yoga I, my body actually got more symptoms, I got more ill and so I started to investigate natural cures and now I've realized that the programming that I had in my life, in my personality, that was like my identity, if you like, who I thought I was, mm -hmm. who, I, who am I? Mm -hmm. um, that was actually being expressed through my body. I remember seeing a quote by the Buddha years ago that said, you are, the body is the subconscious mind. Yeah. And I never understood what that meant. I had no idea. I thought, oh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I even quoted it because it was so cool, but I didn't really know what it meant. <laughs> But now I understand that the processes and the ideas that the mind conjures up, retains, uses, these are the substance that is now expressed through my body. 
And so the symptoms were telling me where my mind was yeah. out of whack, where my mind had this story that didn't match the reality of the life that I was living. And so I went to find out how to change the programming and maybe remove, you know, delete, amend and update as we do in programming. That's mm -hmm. what you nice. Do. So I went on a journey. So rather than programming computers, I then moved to programming me and reprogramming me. And um, as a result of that, I now teach how to reprogram yourself. And this is what we need to really heal. And that part of the healing is discovering who am I. Because my inner me is where all of my intelligence is. And when I tap into that inner intelligence, and it is the bodily held intelligence, as well as spiritual intelligence, mm -hmm. when I really tap into that aspect of myself and my mind becomes aligned with that and attuned with that, that's where real health is. That's my definition of real health. Yeah. Wow. I just... Okay, people, she will take over now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's exactly what I feel, but I, I can't explain it yet. Um, I experienced the same thing like uh, with my story and um, but I, yeah, I can't explain it yet. And you, you just say that like, yeah, how, how did I feel it? Like, it's like amazing. So, and also that, that, that you're changed your, um, uh, yeah. How I'm going to uh, tell this, you're programming to deprogramming yourself. So it's like just a little switch, but yeah. it's actually doing the same, but yeah. from the heart end. So it's so beautiful. Yeah. It's just so close and just so different. Like, wow. Yeah, um, yeah it's so, it's so beautiful. Um, and you say it's like, yeah, how, how long ago is this that you say? Uh, you were sick or, or that you changed everything? Uh, 2007, I went to live in India and mm -hmm. I stayed there for nearly two years and did my yoga training and lots of different therapeutic work with yoga, mm -hmm. getting the, um, uh, the energy of yoga and the, the language of yoga, the Sanskrit was what I studied. Oh. So um, after that, then I actually got diagnosed with more symptomatic mm -hmm. processes. Mm -hmm. in 2009 mm -hmm. that was when I said okay this is it this is a uh, it was I, I, it was like I had my life taken away I had yeah. no peace because the um the diagnosis was a thyroid condition which had been a few years before and I'd just taken the medication and not questioned the doctor's wisdom and that medication actually then threw my body out of balance so much that I developed even more symptoms and the symptoms moved into my eyes and I have what is called thyroid eye disease. Oh. So this was the diagnosis I was given and I had double vision. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if you can see, but this left eye is more prominent than this right eye. Mm -hmm. Especially when I smile, my, my right eye kind of disappears yeah. as some of them used to. Mm -hmm. But left eye it's very scared and it lo it always looks a bit panicked and mm -hmm. you know you get worried and you go oh, so you can see that oh that startled effect yeah. it's like stuck in startled but it's stuck in startled so much that all of the tissues around the eye have become inflamed and overgrown mm -hmm. they've pushed the eye out now when this first happened i started i had double vision so i would have looked at you on the screen now and I would have seen one of you here and one of you here. Mm -hmm. So everything suddenly split into two images. And so I couldn't really, I couldn't read very well. I had to read with one eye. I couldn't work at the computer. I, I mean, I could have, but I would have had to do it all with one eye. Mm -hmm. And it, that world felt very different. I developed really high levels of anxiety. Mm -hmm. I was depressed as well as anxious, which is a very difficult combination to manage. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> And I actually got um, agoraphobia as well, fear of going outside. Oh. And I realized it was because, because I had these two images. In reality, if there was a bus driving down the road here, uh, this, I would see it like it was coming through me. 
So I had th this this anxiety. I realised was because I, my body was perceiving as if it was going to walk into walls, walk into buses, mm -hmm. walk into people. Mm -hmm people were walking through me or driving so this yeah. was really creating this huge anxiety so i couldn't teach yoga because if i started to look around the class i'd see two of everybody so mm -hmm. i could help and assist people yeah. i couldn't stand on one leg i couldn't drive i couldn't ride a bike oh. and literally i'd had this life that i'd known mm -hmm. was taken. It was just taken yeah and so at the time, I thought I'd made a choice to go into this journey, but I had no choice. There was no choice. Mm. Uh, the, the the medical message was all about if I had um, taken lots of quite toxic medication and then had lots of different surgery. And one of the surgeries, they said, oh, we'll just pop the eyeball out and we'll remove some bone and some tissue. And I had these visions of eyeballs rolling around oh. on the surgery. Yeah, no. And, I, and then they were going to do some, then he said, oh, and we can remove the um, the cataracts. And I said, but I don't have cataracts. He said, oh, yes, yes, we'll do this radiation and that will give you cataracts, but we'll just remove them. And I said, no, 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 hang on, hang on. And when I asked, will this correct my double vision? Oh, no, we can't guarantee that. Oh. We'll make it look the same, but we can't get, and I was like, I don't mind if you don't know if you mind if I swear, but I couldn't give a shit. Mm -hmm looks yeah, yeah, yeah. I, about what I can see yeah I want to be able to live a normal life again I don't want to have this two worlds and neither of which I can live in I live in the space between in anxiety and in depression so that was yeah that was my <laughs> my calling to to move out of the very logic it was like I moved out of my logical left mm -hmm. brain mm -hmm. and I'm a, I tried to move into the right brain it all got a bit confused for many years. And mm -hmm. now I think that, that what the result has been is that I can live in both. I can yeah. actually live in both and yeah. I, I can be balanced in that space now as well. And, and what did you do then for healing yourself then? Uh, what, what? The first step on my journey was um, EFT, which mm -hmm. is tapping, tapping on acupressure points. Mm -hmm. I learned about EFT and what EFT does is it helps to calm the whole nervous system mm -hmm. and body, lots of different systems in the body get calmed while you tune into a problem. So take yourself mentally to a place where you would be anxious, mm -hmm. or where you would be depressed or, mm -hmm. you know, yourself into the state mm -hmm. and then use the EFT to rebalance everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I did a a few different varieties of EFT. One of them is called matrix re-imprinting, which I love it. It's magic. Yeah. So you go to a memory and you imagine tapping your younger self. Oh. So you go to old trauma uh -huh. and you visit that traumatized younger me. Mm -hmm. We tap together and we give the younger me the release of the trauma. Mm -hmm. And we, re we give the programs of the new resources, what was needed at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I do a couple of other processes now where one's uh, called a brain working recursive therapy. It's like brain rewiring. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's the same. It's about going to old memories. But it's not that you just visit the old you. Mm -hmm. You also look at the future you. So you build both images. Mm -hmm. You build a resourced past memory and you build yeah. a resourceful future memory at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you actually are rewiring your brain to build this future that you want. You choose what you would rather have. I also do a thing called meta health or meta medicine. Mm -hmm. And that's about understanding what the symptoms are. What is the tissue of my body telling me through its expression of this symptom? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when the tissue is growing too fast, why is it growing fast? Mm -hmm. Or if it's not growing enough, why is it not growing enough? Or if it's growing in a certain way that's out of balance. So looking at the language of symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that the thing that I'm working on at the moment and learning more about, and I absolutely love it, is that the actual trauma release. Because it's it's one thing working with the memory and the information in your mind mm -hmm. to remove and resolve trauma. Mm -hmm. But actually the body also stores memory of trauma in the tissues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to get the body to release this tissue held memory and to rewire or re-regulate the body is that's where I am at the moment. And that's why now I understand why I liked yoga so much. Mm -hmm. 
yoga is rebalancing the physical body. Yeah. Um, and what I've added to my yoga practice now is this aspect of trauma release. Oh. So not only am I flexible and resilient mm-hmm. in current body and in the future i can also bring the old information through and to transform that old story that the body's holding as well oh wow i never heard of that like uh, that kind of yoga i'm uh, so you teach this also this uh yeah uh, releasing yoga yeah oh wow it's the process called trauma release exercises which mm-hmm. the guy who developed it is called david baselli mm-hmm. And uh, there's another guy called Peter Levine. Mm-hmm. Um, both, both of them help to release this old story uh, from the body. Yeah. And um, the the work that they did, once I started to understand it, then how do how I can incorporate it? Mm-hmm. So, for example, as a yoga teacher, you know, you'll be practicing a really strong warrior pose, and you're there for a while, and mm-hmm. you're talking about it and you're showing the students what to do and some part of your leg might start to feel a bit weak and and shaky and trembly and the old me the old yoga teacher that I was I would be stoic and solid and I would try not to tremble because I'm I'm solid and I'm a yoga teacher Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that's not the right thing to do now I know oh wow there's a tremble (gasps) now let's explore the tremble let it body do this movement because there's information here Oh wow! So now my I can be the wobbliest yoga teacher on the, or in the room or practicing in the wobbliest process in the room, mm-hmm. and that's a really it's a huge shift yeah. in the way that I teach. But mm-hmm. also it's a it's a huge um, regaining of the alignment of what my body is actually doing and expressing, and my body is part of who I am in this life here and now mm-hmm. in this. You know this 3D world or this 5D world or whatever you want. Mm-hmm, <laughs> what mm-hmm. world you live in, yeah. the body is a part of this. Mm-hmm. So while I love the idea of the philosophical inquiry of who am I, uh, you know, I am just another aspect of the universe. Mm-hmm. I also understand materially in 3D in this world, this body is part of me for now. Mm-hmm. So with that, if I ignore it or if I try to change what it's giving me, what it's showing me, without looking into it and allowing it to express itself, then wow. I'm actually denying part of who I am. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful how the body says it, says it all, actually. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I ha- you have, uh, you, you did many research then to, yeah to heal yourself and and yeah I, I just did the same like just keep looking what what feels right for you what didn't f- felt right for me and and I bumped because I I, re- I really was curious um, for the cause the cause of my my cancer and and because the doctors were always saying like um, yeah you're just unlucky but for me, it's like, yeah, that's that's not enough. I want no. to know more, Ali. Unlucky, okay. Uh, and then I found something, the five bio- biological laws. And yes, that's it's... The same. Yes, that's the same as meta health. So ah, German oh. medicine, yes. Oh. Same wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for me, it was like the, the, the jumping point, okay, to uh, letting go my fears, just, just understand my body and yeah, after that, I, I had the courage to take my own, my own journey to the inner exploration of who am I. Like, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a, an amazing, yeah, it's just amazing. I can't describe it in words, like, <laughs> but yeah, I, I really love it. And, and at first it's like, whoa, it's totally different kind of thinking. So it's uh, learning with small processes and then it's like, whoa. It's true, this match, and, and yeah, I went to the Netherlands, studied that, and uh, yeah, I, I'm glad that, uh, that this came on my path, and uh, yeah, I was looking for it, so <laughs> eventually uh, you always get what you're, you're searching for, so it was very beautiful. It's uh, a very difficult thing to share with people, the German New Medicine or the Meta Health, because it is so... It, it, it disagrees with a lot of what we've been taught. So the mm-hmm. programming that we've already got doesn't accept it. Yeah. 
and yet it's it, and there's so much truth in it it's like i think that it's the medicine of truth seekers yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. find, to find either german new medicine or meta health it is such a powerful understanding these five biological laws yeah absolutely yeah. are yeah, yeah. laws they mm -hmm. really laws aren't they yeah. and they're not man-made either they're totally from nature yeah 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 i yeah it's just fascinating to me uh how yeah it's all yeah it's always right like so yeah it's beautiful um and what we yeah i i want to ask something else because you are a woman with so much wisdom so now that you're here, I just like ask, 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 <laughs> because uh, I saw you, you did very different things because now we talk about um, your health wise. How did you grow in that and how did you, what, what different things that you have done? And um, I saw that, yeah, it's, I think why uh, the universe put us together like <laughs> Um, it's yeah. I I want to bring out my uh, my story and just. Uh, but I'm I'm very shy. I'm very closed and very um, yeah scared of what people will say or think or just. So maybe yeah. How if do you do that? Had you, did you have the same? Client, um, yes, but in a different way. I'm not shy. I do care what other people think, but it doesn't come out as shyness. Okay. For me, it actually, it gives me more um, s superficial confidence because I know that I'm very good at many things. Mm -hmm. So I've always been um, quick to learn. So I was good at mathematics. Uh, I can, I'm good at cooking. I can knit. I can paint. I, I, I just have wow. this natural ability to be able to, I think as a soul, I've had many lifetimes yeah. <laughs> and, and many skills yeah. because I find it very, I mean, there are lots of things that I don't enjoy mm -hmm. and things that I'm not very good at, but mm -hmm. when I enjoy something, I, I learn it very quickly. And so I've got this superficial confidence because of my ability to be skillful. Mm -hmm. And that, confidence it takes me out of myself and it gives me all it gives all of my attention to you the mm -hmm. other person and that's exactly what this I is doing it is seeking approval oh so that's... mine is the same root of worrying what other people will think yeah it's a totally different way of expressing it yeah yeah so my um uh, for, for me, your your shyness. So if you were my coaching client, what I would ask you is what's the worst thing that can happen? Mm -hmm. And we would explore what are the worst things that can happen. And your imagination is amazing. And your conscious mind can uncover unconscious or subconscious um, imagined scenarios mm -hmm. that are programs. Mm -hmm. Those, those programs, they're often really amusing, really scary, mm -hmm. uh, often totally irrational, mm -hmm. um, but they absolutely hold us back. Mm -hmm. And so looking again, looking to the past at where, the, where, this, where, the, where these ideas, where these imagined ideas may have come from mm -hmm. is a place to explore. Mm -hmm. But what's much more important, mm -hmm. we do need to explore the past because the release of old traumas will be yeah. part of what's holding those programs together. Yeah. But what's much more important is to look at what you would rather have because yeah. what you would rather have has to be an experience that you actually know, mm -hmm. something that you know that you can do, you've had an experience of it before um, and you believe that it's possible for you to do it again. Uh, or you do do it in certain situations. Mm -hmm. And so transporting yourself into that place of where would you rather be? So for example, as we're speaking now, as we're having a conversation right now, just the two of us, mm -hmm. there is no shyness. I haven't seen any shyness in you. Yeah, I feel like I'm blocking. Is there still some part of me that's not relaxed and and wearing this mask like, yeah. Uh, okay. well, but we have to wear masks. That's so the personality. Oh. It, it is masked. Uh -huh. The word personality means mask. Yeah, yeah it means yeah. 
mm-hmm. so which is the voice and the idea behind the mask in I think it's Greek theater is where the word comes from oh. but the spirit needs the body to express itself mm-hmm. and the body needs a personality to express and relate and communicate yeah so in that simplistic form we have to have a mask mm-hmm. a mask we you know probably wouldn't even speak <laughs> <We'd> like, <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't be communicating with anybody without yeah. the mask. So we do need the mask. Yeah. And the more real we can be with the mask that we're showing right now, yeah. the, the, the easier life becomes, the more fun life becomes. So yeah. it's almost like um, I've just a, a lovely insight that just came to me then is the mask of a clown. Imagine if you could always wear the mask of the clown. Yeah. That it would be like the best thing ever. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. One of my fears is humiliation. Yeah. Well, if you're a clown, that totally removes humiliation from the equation, doesn't it? Mm-hmm, well, mm-hmm. That's I've never I've never had that one before. That's a really nice preferred to be. <laughs> I prefer <laughs> the <to> clown. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, um, but obviously, the clown wouldn't be appropriate always because you know if you're helping somebody that's having a problem. And they're really deeply depressed or crying or mm-hmm. the clown isn't always going to help to shift from where they are mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. meeting people where they are right now is important and that's why we need all of these masks oh. your mask of shyness will have lots of ingredients yeah and and the, the most powerful of those ingredients will be old trauma unresolved trauma mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. can be trauma from this life it can be ancestral trauma that's come through your parents behaviors mm-hmm. or if People believe in past lives, and I'm completely open mm-hmm. to anything. That, but if you've got a belief, bring it to me, and we'll share what it means to you and how it's going to help you now. Yeah. I don't dis- disagree with anybody's beliefs. I don't disbelieve anybody's beliefs. Mm-hmm. We, we all have our own ways and means of things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's three places that the trauma will be, either part of where you've been in this lifetime, uh, something from your ancestors or from a past life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There are also... Um, society trauma mm-hmm. that can make a huge impact but that often is reflected in the ancestry yeah. uh, so rough, actually there are four places first time i've thought well oh, this is a really good conversation two insights in one conversation That's yay really cool. we think. grow together <laughs> yes so uh, i'm a clown and i have environmental trauma too oh, wow that's great yeah good um so the shyness is a resource it's a program yeah that that will have worked very well yeah i know i know where it where it started like uh, before i was i was little and my mom uh, was always yelling that i had to have um good points at school and i uh yeah didn't do great at school and um also also the the people if i say something they will hurt me so it's like yeah you if you if you will speak then you will get hurt eventually so that's the the shyness part like okay. yeah okay so looking in the hurt because hurt is always the at the root of what we are protecting ourselves against mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so again if we, if you were a coaching client so we'd explore what's the worst thing that could happen and we could identify within that very specifically what is it that you perceive as painful mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then we allow i would allow you to drop into that pain and maybe do some tapping or do some of the bwrt and mm-hmm. also the other tool that i haven't yet mentioned oh <laughs> is is kinesiology oh what's that <laughs> kinesiology is muscle testing so you may have seen it some um, people use it on and i know a few people who use it on stage um oh so you do basically i don't know if you can see you put your somebody's arm out and mm-hmm. you say so say your name and mm-hmm. it's nice and strong now say my name's donald duck and it gets weak Ooh. so the muscle switches on mm-hmm one type of information and mm-hmm. switch off for another type of information and so again tapping into the brilliance intelligence of the oh, body yeah so i don't ask your mind questions 
I ask your physical body. Now, we do need to be in the same room to do this process. I do a diluted version of it because I can ask my body to tell me what your body's mm-hmm. needs are mm-hmm. or what your body's answers are. Yeah. So I, it's called, that's called surrogate oh. testing. So I can do surrogate testing, but I try not to rely on that too mm-hmm. much because I know that my programs can easily impact that process so when i'm face to face with the client i use your body Mm -hmm. to ask your body exactly what's needed now i don't i've I've put them all away um i have books that are full of lists lists of beliefs lists of emotions lists of behaviors lists of symptoms lots of lists wow and i ask your body which book do we need to look in and it'll say this book number four. So we look in book number four. What page do I need to go? And you, I just touch the page. This page, yes, okay. This part, no. This part, yes. And we can. Your body will give me specifically wow. what the information is that we need to focus on. And the brilliant of that is that it gets into your unconscious trauma and unconscious programs that we need to work with. Mm-hmm. So it's the deepest process ever to to um explore mm-hmm. but not only we use it to explore what's there i also use it to help to create the description if you like of mm-hmm. are we going to work to help to correct and transform into what we do want wow wow it's amazing and and how did you find this like uh well just... my my teachers for meta health the five biological laws yeah. that in the uk we've got this system called meta health that uses those same laws mm-hmm. uh, teachers who taught me that also did kinesiology they do a thing called cyber kinetics oh. which is about feedback loops so uh, cybernetics is the feedback mechanism so you give something and the body uses them all the time so mm-hmm. like for well, my thyroid system, my endocrine system is out of whack because the feedback loop for the thyroid system somehow somewhere has a block in it. Mm-hmm. But the everything is on feedback loops, everything in the body. So cyber kinetics is using the body's own feedback loops and the muscle testing mm-hmm. to really investigate what goes on within the body. Mm. Uh, because some kinetics, some kinesiology is just yes and no. Mm-hmm. But the system that I work with we find out um, if it's a yes, is it 1% or is it 99%? We can actually find out what the percentage is because very little is black and white. Yeah. Most most of what we're dealing with is grey and a mm-hmm. shade of grey. Mm-hmm. And so how do you, when you've only got a yes or a no, it's impossible to work mm-hmm. in grey. And so this, the brilliance of this system, cyberkinetics, is that you can work in the grey and yeah. find out how grey it is. <laughs> oh, wow, it's amazing. I didn't know that. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, it's uh, something new. Um, yeah, I'm just blown away by all your information. <laughs> it's like, wow, I have to see this again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, because now you mentioned, you mentioned uh, all your different things that you were doing, like, but when did you started with this or just made the change to say okay now i will do this yeah. every day and Mm-mm. no it's been very organic so ah. i started teaching yoga and yeah. i when i was living in india i had a daily practice where i practiced two three sometimes four times a day because i was doing a lot of teaching mm-hmm. And then in when I came back to the UK and I still had more symptoms coming out, mm-hmm. then I started to use more EFT. Mm-hmm. And um, I've always worked with sound and meditation as well. So they're the things that for me have been a constant practice. So for a while, my physical yoga practice, didn't I didn't do it at all because, you know, I found it difficult to balance. I was really yeah. depressed. Mm-hmm. And so... As I've learned more and more skills, because the my journey is to, I mean, I've resolved most of the symptoms. The the the, the vision symptom mm-hmm. is or is if I look over to the side, I can still see double. But while I'm looking in front of me, and I can drive, I can ride a bike again. So I've got a, a good single vision window now. Mm-hmm. But I still have double vision because the inflammation is still a process. Mm-hmm. That's, it's not growing anymore. It's not inc- it's not increasing in yeah. size, but yeah. it hasn't yet resolved. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah 
will. But my journey is to, to continue to help to heal my body. Mm -hmm. But also part of that journey is to accept, accept yeah. right now and to um, appreciate and love the beauty of the symptoms because of the information that lives within those symptoms, yeah. the language of those symptoms. Yeah. And I really appreciate the brilliance of that intelligence. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like the effect, but actually what it's given me is priceless. Yeah. Uh, you, you just couldn't put a value on what the information that these symptoms have actually given me about who, what are the programs, the programs that are, that used to yeah. me mm -hmm. and how I resolve and rewrite and update those programs. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it's been a really uh, organic journey and mm -hmm. my current daily practices are really meditative ones, but mm -hmm. not sitting in meditation. Because when I'm sitting, either I'm working on a computer or mm. I'm teaching or so for me sitting like I'm sitting cross legged now on a futon. So to sit like this is not a meditative trigger for me mm -hmm. Do meditation on public transport. If I'm on my own, mm -hmm. do meditation uh, in the morning when I wake up, just as just I just stay in bed mm -hmm. and you know feel my breathing start to feel my body start to connect with what's going on inside my body because mm -hmm. you've been in your head all night in your dreams or wherever you've been um often before i sleep as well especially if i don't fall if sometimes i fall asleep immediately but if i lie in bed and i don't sleep immediately i go oh yes let's connect connect yeah. into the body uh, and then just there are just little times through the day where i'll think oh mm, let me feel my breathing so i don't have a formal practice mm -hmm. my meditation i just use um you I'm, I, I think i probably do maybe five or six times a day i find Ooh. little times where mm -hmm. oh, Time to drop in. Oh, nice. Find myself dropping in. Uh, or sometimes if I'm working on the computer, you know, you get the wheel of death. Mm -hmm. on and you're waiting and you're waiting. That, that, oh, good. Right. Okay. It's a little signal from the universe. Thank oh, you. great. <laughs> yeah. That's it's, it's great. And my physical practice, I don't teach yoga classes regularly at the moment. Mm -hmm. I teach it, like I've got a retreat. I'm going on a retreat in two weeks' time. Oh, and wow. so We'll be doing yoga twice a day there, so I'll mm -hmm. be practicing because I'm teaching and practicing. But my yoga practice, if I do it twice a week at the moment, that's probably the average. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Twice a week, that's a lot. Yeah. Which I, I know that my body needs more, um, and it's. But it, but if I start to to call myself lazy or bad, or it, that's stupid. That's a waste. And so how, I, how do you know that that your body needs more? Is it telling you, or are you feeling that? When, that, when I am practicing, there's just this this feeling of oh, thank goodness you're back here. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah. So the delight that happens when you really re-enter the body, you really reconnect to the physical body and the movements of the body yeah, and yeah. the feeling of the body and postures. It's that delight that happens in those yeah, moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's moving meditation then. Eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. But yeah. life is so relentless, you know, we've got information, we've got bills, we've got problems, we've got mm. clients, we've got family. We, th there's this relentlessness about life that is actually the stuff of my life right now. Mm -hmm. And as, as relentless as it might feel, if I allow myself to go, it's okay, this is life. I can enjoy even relentless, I can enjoy. <laughs> it's the flow of the yeah. life I've chosen. Um, with another practice that I do is that I work a lot with um, shamanic groups. Oh yeah. In the last year that's been a bit less. Mm -hmm. but working with shamanic information and understanding how to, um, just to, just to settle in again, settle into me. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why my meditation has grown so much as well in the last few years, because I've added that shamanic ingredient of, Oh, lovely body. Oh, I love this body. It's great. It's like, it's like I've got this great suit, <laughs> this suit of flesh that I use to wear. And at the so same it's honoring, it's honoring your body then, or what do you do? Like what specific yeah. things? Honoring and enjoying, just feeling, just feeling. Uh, ah, okay. Okay. You know, feeling the weight of the body sitting in the seat. Oh yeah. Yeah feel it I can feel where the weight is dropping down if I feel what's happening around my heart if I feel yeah. you know what's going on inside my head as a feeling experience yeah yeah 
and inside that feeling experience realizing that every thought is creating my next moment is the doorway into the next moment yeah yeah and so while i'm in the body i'm in the moment mm -hmm. only when i go into thoughts that i can think next because yeah. <laughs> wow. while i'm here there's no next there's only now yeah yeah so as soon as i start thinking about anything that's the past or the future i go oh thoughts hello thoughts yeah and enjoying them yeah because even if they're bad, even if they're good. It, the, the more I judge, this is something that Kyle talks about, doesn't he, being in resistance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whenever I'm in resistance to what is, that's where my thoughts are all a bit, ooh, a bit, you know, this whole thing about things being relentless, that's resisting. Yeah. If I wasn't resisting, I wouldn't be able to say relentless. Yeah. I would say flow. Yeah. It might, it might be fast mm -hmm. flow, but yeah. it would just be flow. Uh-huh. So knowing when, um, there's, I wrote a poem, of, uh, I did a shamanic retreat about a year ago, and I wrote this poem about my inner voice makes no sound. My inner voice is feelings and sensations and wisdom in the body. Wow. And it has no voice. Wow. I give it a voice when I allow it to bubble up. And yeah. then I choose to put words to what's bubbled up. Wow, it's beautiful. When there is a voice in my head, it's not mine. Whereas when I, when I allow the voice to bubble up to my head, mm -hmm. then I'm experiencing me. Oh, beautiful. The inner voice ha has no, have no sound. Has no sound, yeah. Oh, wow. That's really uh, heart touching. <laughs> for me thank you for sharing that how i'm written down it's a handwritten thing I can, i'll send it to you yeah thank you thank you very much it's very beautiful wow you do so many so many different things <laughs> like uh oh um it's my whole life my, i don't have anything else that i do in my life my life is about enjoying all of what i do so i don't i can't say that i work and i or i wow. play because Yay. Work is my play, is my life, it's, it's everything I do. And then I've got the, the gift of understanding how to do computer programming. So I bring myself online. And unfortunately, when I'm online, I'm mm. often not in my body. So I know yeah. that there's a massive disconnect. So I enjoy being away from computers and switching everything off. So I'll be a week in Marrakesh in, a few, in two weeks' time. Mm -hmm. We'll have very little online time. Okay. And I really enjoy that. But I actually love the creativity of, you know, making posters, doing things on Facebook. Oh, I, I do the same. I love creating websites and things. Let me just plug. I just realized I think I'm going to run out of electricity. I need to plug me in. Oh. <laughs> I didn't realize I wasn't plugged in. It's no problem. It's real TV. Yes. <laughs> or there radio. <laughs> just, just a red light flashing. Like, what's that? <laughs> right, we're back on. So yes, yeah, so the whole. Um, oh, it's because I was talking about my computer. You see, it's connected to. <laughs> it's like ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so I've been able to use my skills as a programmer with computers is also really added to the to the life that I've got now because and um, sharing what I do, what I know, my experiences. I absolutely love sharing it. It, it. And I know many people say that they, they're here to serve and they love to serve and they want to make sure other people um, are doing well. I actually don't care <laughs> about other people. Okay. Because that's been my issue. That's the seeking approval. And, and I know that oh, yeah, yeah. I, can't, I, can, I can never not care about other people mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I'm so programmed to seek approval yeah. that I'm constantly focused on what the other is. Yeah. So my practice is to care about me. Yeah. And what I found is the more I care about me, the more I enjoy what I do, it's infectious, it's contagious. And other people want to spend time with me. They want more they want some of what i've got mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i don't need to ask others uh, or to seek others approval or to help other people i don't need to do any of that 
yeah. the more I help me, it automatically helps other people. Yeah, yeah. So this becoming as selfish as possible mm -hmm. and, and a huge awakening for me. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, I have the same uh, with uh, normally I always was uh, taking care of everyone else yeah. except myself. And, and, um, and now I do the other way around um, because for me, like, I don't know if you know um, Michael Beckwith. Yes. Um, but I, I learned it from Kyle Cease. Um He said, uh, like, uh, what's trying to emerge out of this situation? And um, for me, in the Kelly, for me, yeah, I was thinking that yeah, it's, it's a powerful question. And it was like, well, yeah, what, what is it actually in my journey of cancer? And, and, and eventually it was like, yeah, just taking care of yourself and and he, that's why i create now also heal your self connection because yeah. it was such a gift just to yeah start to know yourself and by changing yourself the, the world around around you will change with you and and like you say uh, normally you, you want approval from outside but now it's just the approval from inside and the outside world will come to you now and mm -hmm. it's not like so it's mm -hmm. it's beautiful it's like uh I, I i did this journey but i can't explain it in words that's why i'm looking for beautiful teachers like you so it's like okay how can i express what's in me and and just learn it by step by step so thank you thank you for sharing this wise wisely information uh, <laughs> wow <laughs> um yeah and another question that i have is like why why you want to bring this message to the world like because if the world were able to and what is your message what is your message maybe in in in, in one sentence like what's my message Yeah, I think that every thought is your doorway to the next moment. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so the thought this the idea that thoughts create mm -hmm. the reality. Mm -hmm. I really love the quote from Wayne Dyer when he says, um, when you change the way you look at things, yeah. the things that you look at change. Yeah, I love that too. Yeah. yeah. So for me this the, the truth of that is that every moment is a choice point for me when i take that choice into my my reality into my way of being when i make it a choice a conscious choice then i can choose what i want and then i don't have to worry about what the world is doing that i don't want mm -hmm. i don't have to worry about anything that i judge negatively because so I use a little story with, uh, with, with clients or when I do, because I do do public speaking as well, mm -hmm. so it's about obsolescence. So in obsolescence, something will die naturally or it doesn't have to die. So mm -hmm. for example, um, Windows 95. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have the CD and it's got Windows 95 written mm -hmm. on it. I put it into my computer, mm -hmm. this one like it because it's a Mac. If I had a Windows <laughs> computer, I could put it, I think I could probably install it on a computer. I'm not sure, but I think I possibly could. And it would still work. Mm -hmm. And I could load up Explorer and I could go to YouTube and I could watch a video. I could watch this podcast. Mm -hmm. It might take a very long time. It might be slow and it might be interrupted, but it would still work. But who gives a shit about Windows 95? Yeah. Nobody ever tried to kill it. Nobody tried to change it. Nobody tried to dismantle it. Nobody mm -hmm. tried to set it on fire. It was left to do what it does while we went on and built what we wanted. So now there's Windows 10 or there's Mac software or there's, there's all these different ways to use your computer, different systems that you can use on your computer. Mm -hmm. And yet Windows 95, it's still here. Mm -hmm. It exists but it has no power. So it's become obsolete. Mm -hmm. 
we allow what's happening in our lives to be totally focused on what we do want, mm -hmm. that shifts and it changes. It's not a straight line. We'll, you know, we'll get something that we want and then we realize, mm -mm, yeah. actually, I want more or I want something different. Mm -hmm. But just continuously focus on, focusing on what I want, what I want, what I want, allows obsolescence to take care of everything else <laughs> and mm -hmm. I don't need to give it my attention I don't need to give it my energy and inside what I what is it that I want that you have to be careful with that don't you because for example if you say I want more patience I need to be more patient mm -hmm. what will the world give you the world will give you a longer queue a longer line of people at the bus stop mm -hmm. And it means you can't even get on the bus because the bus is full. That's what happens when you ask for patience. Mm -hmm. Life gives you the experience that you need to embody what you want. Yeah. So being very careful about what you ask for. Yeah. Before my eye condition happened and I was living in India, mm -hmm. I wanted to know more about Samadhi, enlightenment. Mm -hmm. I was fascinated by it. Mm -hmm. Now I understand that what life has given me is the opportunity to embody the Samadhi experience because it screwed me over. It just took everything away. Yeah. So the enlightenment was, do you know what, here, let's just take the whole of life away from you. Let's yeah. lighten your load. Let's take it all away. What are you left with? And I was lost. I was absolutely lost. I was terrified. I was depressed. I was anxious. Yeah. And I'd, what I'd asked for was actually what I now know I've begun to embody, which is this experience of living in the moment, uh, understanding that I'm creating my reality, all of those things. So, yeah, yeah. I think that's a long, very long answer to the question of what, what is my message. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have the same, all the things like, and also um, control what you can control and let go what you can't control. I, I learned I that. I can control anything. The only thing I can control is where am I placing my attention right now? Yeah. yeah. That's the only thing I can control. Where am I placing my attention right now? Yeah, that's what I did with, with my cancer story also, yeah. like hitting like hitting um, the lowest point. Everything was taken away. I couldn't be a mom. I couldn't be a career, career woman. I couldn't take care of other people. And it was like, yeah, but what's left? It's like, who am I? And, and there I realized, yeah, I... Um, I yeah, started with this yeah, inner journey and, and just like, okay, what can I control here? And the only thing that I could control is, is getting to know myself and just seeing what do I want to do the rest of the, the days or months that I have. And it was like, yeah, and it, then it started the, the, the journey of the inner world and, and it was just, okay, it was hard, scary, but now it's like, I'm thankful that I had the opportunity to to change myself. I yeah, it's it's. Yeah. I'm really interested in your story. I'd love to. I'd love to 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 talk and share again with you and find out more about your journey. Yeah. Not um, right now. Okay. <laughs> <I'm scared. laughs> okay. <Phew>. <laughs> not right now. Not right now. Okay. Wow, we are already uh, 50 minutes in. It's crazy. Uh, so much wisdom. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe we are, I think yeah, you have so much already answered. <laughs> let, me let me tell you a little bit about the work that I'm doing right now. Is that the, okay? If I the tell work? You? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I will, that, that's what I also was asking, like um, the, the profession that you, you, you are doing now because of the, the things that, that happened to you. And... So, um, well, I've got, I've, I've got three, I'm involved in three different businesses. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, but three that I focus on. Mm -hmm. uh, one is called Stage Fright Away, where I work with clients specifically on clearing stage fright or Fears, yeah, fears and phobias <laughs> generally, but I do focus on stage fright. So I'm a public speaking coach oh, nice. and I help to clear the old trauma to mm -hmm. show your inner brilliance. So you can shine, you can be the stardust that you are. Mm 
So that's wow. one of the things that I do. I've yeah. got um, online programs and I also do coaching work. The other business I've got is Corporate Yoga London, which is where I take yoga into the corporate world mm -hmm. and use it to help leadership training because it's mainly about mindset and meditation and um, expanding your awareness and expanding your business. Mm -hmm. So I do a little bit of yoga at your desk or yoga classes inside the, the workplace, but it's mainly leadership training and mm -hmm. learning about that. I wrote a book about it. It's called Companies Can Do Yoga Too. Oh, wow. So I'll give you the link so that you can put the link somewhere around the podcast as well for the book. Of it's course, of book. course. And, the book. Um, and what I'm <laughs> really focused on at the moment is helping women who are over 35. Mm-hmm and are at a crossroads in their life and have asked themselves a question like, who am I? Why mm -hmm. am I here? And is this all there is to life? Mm -hmm. So if you're a woman or a man, we do help men as well, over the age of 35 and you've ever asked yourself, who am I? Why am I here? Is this it? Is this life? Then what we've done is we've developed a system and it's called that we've written a book as well with my friend. She's called Cheryl Chapman. We've co-created this business wow. and the business is the Find Your Why Foundation. Wow. So it's finding Your Why. And we've written a book. We've got an online um, mentorship group. So we work together as a group. We run retreats. So that's where I'm going in two weeks to Marrakesh. Oh, we, wow. we do weekend retreats in the UK as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're running a special event on International Women's Day in the UK. So uh, everybody should come. And the date? When is the date? 8th of March. All oh, go to UK. <laughs> OK. And we've got Marie Diamond, who's the Feng Shui master from The Secret. She's a, she's a good friend of ours and she's going to come and do a presentation. So we'll have lots of different processes and presentations through that day. Um, wow. With the Find Your Why Foundation, is is great because it really is in alignment with with, with your your topic which is who am i mm -hmm. because what we say is that in order to find your why there are three things that we focus on so we focus on and it, we, it spells aim so we're aiming for happiness okay yeah. so the a is awareness mm -hmm. i is intention and the m is manifestation so in awareness there are there are two key parts to awareness. So in awareness, we want to find out what's the story mm -hmm. now and how have I got where I am today. Mm -hmm. The other part of awareness is what do I want? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So who I am now, how I got here, and what is it that I want? Mm -hmm. So two key parts to that. And then with intention, we really start to look at the energy of an intention. So for example, you might have a goal mm -hmm. to buy a house. Well, why do you want that house? Is it because you want a summer house or is it because you want to look after a family or is it because you've got horses or is it because you've got dogs or is it because you want to live near work or is it because you want to live near your mum? There's an intention as mm -hmm. to why you choose the house that you choose. So the goal is to buy a new house, but the intention is all of the other life experiences around that goal that mm -hmm. are actually driving you to obtain the goal. So really understanding intention is very important because intention is what works with the law of attraction. Yeah. That's the thing that really attracts what mm -hmm. we get, mm -hmm. as well as the story of who we are. So mm -hmm. when you put the two things together, the awareness of who I am right now and what's, what's got me to where I am, good and bad, and what are my intentions, when I start putting that together, that's where I really see what law of attraction is doing. And so now when I know what the law of attraction is doing, I can focus who I'm being right now mm -hmm. and I can focus my intention so that what's manifest is what I want and how do I continue to keep that manifestation coming in a way that it's my choices mm -hmm. so if anything's out of alignment at any point I can manage and negotiate to get back to what's aligned with me and who I am and who I want to be so that's the Find Your Why Foundation. And it's just, it's amazing. We, we, we wrote the book. We, we made a decision to write the book. Cheryl and I are very different mm -hmm. and very similar at the same time. Mm -hmm. And we made a decision to write the book. And we finished it in about six weeks. Wow. I would churn out some of the teachings that I've done and some of the practices and the things that I did. And then Cheryl would try to take it in because she was still a corporate prisoner. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
two and a half years ago. So she's very fresh mm -hmm. through the world of personal development and self-development. Mm -hmm. And I know that I can be a bit woo-woo and a bit clever and it goes over people's heads. Yeah. Often when I was on stage speaking, because we do public speaking together, we both teach public speaking, when oh, she'd wow. see me on stage and she'd say, I love what you said. And, and, and I feel that it's the right thing to do or the right thing to look at, but I've got no idea what you were talking about. Mm. You lost me. And when you said these certain things, I was like, oh, that sounds a bit woo woo or that doesn't make sense. So what we do is she's like my translator. Mm. <laughs> she helps, like if I go off on my little loop yeah. where I go sometimes, mm -hmm. she goes, Hang on, hang on, Marion. What is it that you're? Uh, what What's the point of this? And what question does this answer? And how does this help specific people? So yeah. we, re because again, my my desire in this business, in the Find Your Why Foundation, is to get everybody access to an awakening and support within that awakening experience because the world is really waking up, but most of us fall into a pit of despair when we begin to awaken. Mm -hmm. and so how can I be a supportive, collaborative, creative co-creator mm -hmm. to whoever wishes to join us on this journey and needs the support of other people and needs a support that's an open space without judgment, but with guidance. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to be nice to you just because we can. We call it, we're not going to blow smoke up your ass. We're going to mm -hmm. tell you how it is we tell the truth we're as honest as we can and yeah. we're as heartfelt as we can be about mm -hmm. the whole experience as well mm -hmm. so we've got a the website is called the find find your why foundation.com uh, we've got facebook pages find your why you'll find us there we've got twitter we've got all sorts of things um, and the community is really starting to grow it's really starting to grow and take off in a way that we couldn't have even imagined before we had a plan how we thought the business would turn out and none of that's worked <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of the universe eh? just like unexpected ways it will come and and the retreats are just phenomenal because there's a there's a retreat page on the website you'll see a video of one of the ladies who came on the retreat um she's called kerry and she had the most incredible experience. So on the first morning of the first retreat that we ever did, uh, we gave people uh, like a, a tarot card, but it was a star seed card. Mm -hmm. These are channeled cards. Some guy channeled the information and put them on cards. We gave everybody a card and she started to read the card. And then we asked everybody, why are you here? What would you like to get out of the, it was a weekend retreat. What yeah. would you like to get out of it? And she said that she'd felt really alone she felt like people were doing better than her, even though she thought that she was possibly more intelligent or better resourced. Mm -hmm. she, people doing really well in the world and she felt like she was some, somehow being held back. But she didn't think that anybody else was having this experience. She felt really alone. Mm -hmm. And she saw all the women in the room and she said, you know, all these successful women in the room and, 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 and I know that they're not having the same problems as me. And I said, hang on a second, Kerry. So everybody in the room, raise your hand if you feel that you can associate with what Kerry has just said. And everybody raised their hand. And she was at the front and I said, just turn around and have a look. And as she turned and she came back and she couldn't breathe, she, was, uh, yeah. she really couldn't breathe. So I'm a yoga teacher, so I understood her body had kind of gone into a shock process. It's mm -hmm. like a full shock. So I went over and I gave her, a, I, I held her hands first. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay we are all here with you and we understand we hear what you're saying and we all feel the same as you mm -hmm. and i think you need to make a noise rather than just breathe let's make a noise and she did this primal scream that was just you could see everybody in the room start to sort of shake mm -hmm. at the noise that she emitted and so when she'd finished i gave her a hug but i could feel there was still a lot of the trauma still active in the body so I still yeah. think you need to do that again so she did it again yeah. and then got the whole room to join in with her and make that and the, the thankfully we were in a barn at the back of the of the complex that we were in so there was nobody <laughs> the noise that came out yeah. of this room for about five minutes was incredible and obviously everybody was crying and it was like mm. a real celebration of emotion yeah. it, matter what your emotion was whether we label it positive whether we label it negative 
It was bring it into this room and let's express it right now. And it was such a powerful process. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. since then we've gone on to just really help to unravel and unwind. And the beauty of it is that every moment of the retreat when I'm teaching is a lesson for me. So mm -hmm. as we have just discovered today, you know, just, just in conversation, Kyle says it, doesn't he? We teach ourselves, you'll be speaking, and if you speak from the heart, yeah. you're channeling such amazing wisdom that your mind didn't even know that you knew this. And yeah. your mind's going, oh, wow, this is really cool. <laughs> well, this is, that's so clever, oh, wow, it's just so insightful. Yeah. So be able to really allow this space where, and it, that space of the heart is where the clown can come from. It's where it's where the wisdom lives. It's where it's where all of the beauty, the juice of the yeah. universe. There's a beautiful Indian word called rasa. It's rasa. a Sanskrit word. Okay. And the rasa means the juice, the beauty of life. So you know, um, pleasure has beauty. Sex has beauty and juice. Shit has beauty and juice. Death has beauty and juice. Murder has everything has its juiciness. It's juicy yeah. beauty. Yeah. It's the and it's there and we can celebrate it yeah we can celebrate it and this is one of the the amazing things that's happened in the retreats that we do and the other part of it is that I know I'm, we're really going over time aren't we the other part of it is that um, we get you to set an intention whenever you work with us the eye for intention is crucial mm -hmm. you need to start looking immediately is what can I do in the next two months that I don't believe if I just carried on as I am now would ever happen, but I really want it. What can I do in those two months? But it has to be achievable and doable. And then we'll set you a task to achieve that and we'll give you whatever support you need. And we have a few tools that we use that are really quite wicked in the mm -hmm. rasa in them. <laughs> <laughs> we have a few juicy tools to help you to get to your intention. Okay. And it's been amazing. One of the women that we worked with less than two months ago is into cryptocurrencies and bitcoins. Well, she did a webinar for us on Thursday of this week mm -hmm. that we put out to our community. So mm -hmm. in less than eight weeks, she'd gone from just doing her own thing with cryptocurrency to now actually teaching and helping other people mm -hmm. how to get on board with bitcoins, with cryptocurrencies, how to get involved at a really basic, simple level where she holds your hand and she takes you through the process. Yeah. So, wow. And I personally have now increased my Bitcoin holding by over 20% inside a month okay. with her help. Wow. Yes. Amazing. Just, you know, being, a, being able to support people and women mainly, but we mm -hmm. do work with men as well. And we call them the wise women, W-H-Y-S. Oh, wise women why? and the community is the live love laugh lounge wow beautiful okay thank you for sharing that um a last question i i always want to do um oh first where can we find you contact you and just so facebook find your why or the website is the find your why foundation.com okay and the rest? <laughs> oh, well, they're, they're all, I mean, they're all connected. So that, that, that's the key one at the moment. That's where okay. that's where I'm get, get, getting the most stuff for me and for everybody that's there. But I also do stagefrightaway.com mm -hmm. and uh, corporateyogalondon.com. And your books and so, they <laughs> the can books. order it? Yeah, the book's available. You, you can check it out on the website. Actually, I've got a Facebook page for the book. The book is called Companies mm -hmm. Can Do Yoga Too. Companies Can Do Yoga Too. Okay. So there is a, there's a Facebook page about that. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. And the book Find Your Why, you can get a free copy off the website, the Find oh. Your Why book. You pay postage and, and handling. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but we, we're giving that book out for free because it's got some really cool stuff. It's really, it's just an amazing book. I love it. Wow. Thank you for uh, giving it away. <laughs> um, I have a last question. I always want to do um, a surprise question. Yes. No, surprise I... me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's also a surprise for me. So it's like uh, what I'm going to ask. What are you going to eat tonight? 
No, 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 no. I'm no, no, no. I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a big question in my life because I love <laughs> cooking, and um, I'm going to be home alone tonight. And I actually, I was, I went shopping today, and then I met a friend, and I didn't do any shopping. <laughs> okay, but that's not the question. <laughs> it's just, it's like. Um... If if it's uh, today your last day, what would you do? Like very short. To be, to, I would do my um, my conscious meditation to be as conscious as possible. Oh wow! I'd write a little note to say to everybody, "I love you, goodbye, celebrate me," and then I would just be as conscious as possible. Wow. And it, I think I'm actually looking forward to dying. I don't want to do it now. I don't want the universe to bring that one on. Uh, but I'm looking forward to death because mm -hmm. um, I, even as a child, I remember saying to my brother, he was frightened about dying for some reason, my older brother. And I mm -hmm. said to him, why are you scared? You just go back where you came from. Oh, wow. And it made a lot of sense to me that why, why would you be scared? You're going to just go back. And it's like you wake up in the morning and and you've been asleep and you don't really know where you've been and I had some really strange dreams this morning and when I woke up I was like oh I want to go back I want to go back and finish that dream off I had all this black hair oh wow <laughs> full of black hair in <laughs> and um and it wouldn't it wouldn't start I was trying to style it and it wouldn't go right but I kept laughing because it just looked like huge um but but yeah the the, the difference between dreaming and waking mm-hmm believe is possibly the difference between living and dying i don't know oh. but i've got a friend who's she's got this beautiful thing she's like our oh, death is going to be like the best orgasm ever <laughs> <laughs> wow oh, i like uh, that yeah <laughs> definitely let that little program live in my head <laughs> wow yeah that's an interesting way to see that yeah well <sighs> am i <laughs> it's like <laughs> Um, I'm speechless. <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing all your wisdom. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to see whatever you're going to do in the future, because what you already did is like mind blowing. So yeah. Manifesting Thank miracles. That was my New Year's Eve resolution. I was on a shamanic retreat and my, my, I manifest more miracles was my New Year's resolution. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay some more than <laughs> well um thank you very much um uh thank you to the listeners also for listening in and uh i hope you will listen next time so thank you very much and love you all and of course love you too and thank you for coming mm -hmm. so thank you, you for asking I thank you bye-bye <laughs> bye